David in Addison, Illinois, listening to WCPT. You want to debate free trade with me? Um, a little bit, actually. Um, you keep talking about how, uh, or at least you did earlier, about how America should back out of all of our free trade agreements and, and start leveraging heavy tariffs like we did pre-Reagan. Yes. Um, I mean, it seems like you're operating under the assumption that we have all the bargaining power in the world economy. Um, a very quick example of what would more than likely happen is, let's say we back out of free trade, and we start leveraging heavy tariffs on China for all the goods we get from China for Walmart and computers and everything. And in response, uh, China says, okay, we're cutting all rare earth metal exports to America, and we're leveraging a uh, tariff on all exports of rare earth metal products made in China heading to America. Right. And they have a near monopoly on rare earth metals, which are used in everything. Well, from yes, and, to yes and no, David. Check your history. They have a near monopoly right now on the production of rare earth metals. But do you know where the largest rare earth metals mine in the world is right now? It's in uh, California. Whatever. It's in California. It's just not operating. And the reason it's not operating, when I, they, they closed it about 11 years ago, and they closed it because the Chinese are mining and refining rare earths and selling them so cheaply that the rare earth uh, mine in California could not compete with them. But we have, the, we have so, those resources here, and we just need to reactivate them. In fact, that mine in California, last year, there was legislation before Congress to reactivate that mine and help the federal government subsidize it to operate at a loss because the, and this, I mean, there were some Republicans pushing this pretty, pretty seriously because they were looking at a time when we may actually be in a war with China. And right now, we can't make a computer chip for a cruise missile without some of the rare earths coming from China. And they're looking at that going, wait a minute, we might, you know, China might be the military power that we fight next and we can't make a missile without their parts, that's crazy. And so I would suggest well, to you, David, that not only would ending free trade and going back to a tariff-based trade system be wise, but we should in particular, we should in particular be subsidizing things like the rare earth mine in California, and there's others all across the country. I mean, rare earths are not all that rare, it's just that they're, 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 they, they get extracted in small quantities, and they're expensive to extract. Now, so, so then the option would be to go back to what we had back before China was producing all the rare earths, where your average PC was two or three thousand dollars, and that's not accounting for inflation. So no, I don't think that that's the case at all. The PCs were two or three thousand dollars back then because they were very expensive to manufacture, not because of the rare earths were so expensive, but because we were just beginning the technology. Uh, no, this is even in the mid '90s. Computers were extremely expensive compared to what sure. they are now. It, 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 they were they were thousands of dollars for for. A, I'm not a I'm not disputing that. Computer. What's his what, what what's his name's law? What is it uh, that every every two years technology you know or every three years whatever it is? Um, Bill Gates used to be fond of quoting it that every cer certain numbers of years technology doubles in its ability and, and drops in half in its price. Moore's law. That's it. It was Moore's law. Thank you, uh, Shane. Yeah, and we've we've actually just about exhausted and that, Moore's law right now. No, Moore's and, law never goes away, and and it has no, nothing no, to do with whether with our trade getting, policies. We're getting to atomic scale computing. At that point, Moore's law no longer applies in terms of uh, reduction in complexity. Um, Why not? What, what, what will ha uh, because you can't get past the atomic scale for computer parts. Uh, Once your resistor is two atoms across, you can't make it any smaller. Well, no, there are, there there are subatomic particles. Which they cannot, they don't function in the same way. They, they can't. Exactly. Uh, so then we get into quantum computing, and then, and then, you know, Moore's law might go on steroids. It might become yeah, but logarithmic. What Moore's law applies to is an individual technology, not computing as a whole. So what they're saying is that the cost will have for the same processor over X number of years, not for computing as a whole. And I'm just talking about one industry. China has effectively the entire supply chain. And what you're saying is... It, we is take it back. We used now. to have that supply chain here in the United States. I guarantee you, David, there are entrepreneurs all over this country where if tomorrow morning... Yeah, because we were to put back on the tariffs that, that Reagan started taking off, if we were to put back on the tariffs on everything from, from socks and jeans, you know, we no longer make jeans in the United States anymore. We invented them. You know, Levi's was a, an American brand. Um, it, we, we stopped making them here six years ago. That was the last jeans manufactured, or at least the last Levi's. If, if all of a sudden that stuff coming into the United States was 30% more expensive, 
there are entrepreneurs who would be looking around going, or computers were $1,000 instead of 600 bucks. There are entrepreneurs who would, who would look around and say, you know, I can figure out how to do that here. And you would see a rebirth of entrepreneurialism in the United States. You would see an explosion of entrepreneurialism in the United States. It would be the best thing that ever happened in this country. And, if, and that would take us back to wages tracking productivity, because there would be such a demand for labor in the United States that wages would start to rise. Along with it would come the tax collections. It would end our budget deficit. It would, it would end any concern about Social Security or Medicare going broke. It would put Americans back to work. It would, it would end the evisceration of the middle class, the, the hemorrhaging of the middle class in terms of cash. Uh, the only people who would be harmed by it are the top 1% who are making their money in international trade. I, you're completely wrong. We, no, we I'm not. 200 years of American history proves me right. We straight up cannot replace the Chinese supply chain. American history We history absolutely can. technology was different. No, we absolutely can. There was a New York Times article at the end of last year called Why We Lost Out on iPhone Work, I believe the title was. You should look into it. We don't have the ability to expand and change capacity on demand the way the Chinese do, and we never that's will. Because they because have we spent have the last, labor regulation. That's because they've spent the last 30 years investing in infrastructure. When Reagan said, we're not going to build infrastructure anymore, the Chinese said, okay, cool, we will. And we'll eat your lunch. No, it's, and they did, and they are. You're wrong. It's, no, it's because they have campuses where people go to manufacture and they live there for 12 months they can hire 3,000 people in 24 hours we can't do that we, we just we, we don't have we, we absolutely can do that we just we just you just have to be willing to pay for it yes with with human rights if you want to do that you have I'm to, not suggesting we become like China David I'm worker. saying we have done this in the past. You know, when World War I broke out, we, we raised our tariffs and we became highly protectionist. When World War II broke out, we, we, now in, in neither case were we as dependent on, another, on one other country as we are right now. On, and, and it's not just China. It's China, Japan, South Korea, there's a, and Germany. Um, there's a bunch of them that we're highly dependent upon. But we can change that. They've all become independent of us. You know, China, Japan at one point was totally dependent upon us. We could do it. Thank you for the call, Dave. We'll be back.